Okay guys, so I need to make a video about this because the shit is getting absolutely crazy. If you want to know where I've been the last few days, I've been in an absolute hole creating all different flow systems. God, my head is going crazy at this stuff. But basically, MCPs to change how client slash rule work plus system workflow problems. Now, I don't know in how much detail I'm going to go in this video, but I just want to kind of explain this process to you guys. Now, as of right now, the only place that this actually exists is on my school community. This is the first video I'm making about this topic. Okay, so this is my only reference point, so I'm going to try and explain this from the school. If you do want to join the school community, feel free to click the first link in the description. It helps support me, and also, you know, I'm trying to organize everything into a very, very digestible format table of contents, everything should be organized. Now, the way th th this all basically came from this MCP here, which is the sequential thinking MCP server. Now, what I've actually gone and done is I've taken this link, right? And all I did was feed it to Klein and I told it to download it, you know, using git clone, whatever, get this entire thing on my system read how it works, right? And then make me one that does QA, right? But this isn't all I want to talk about, but these kind of new MCP servers that change the way the Klein or Roo code are huge. Sequential thinking, for example, although it's got some problems for sure, it it's the only time except using Taskmaster, which is another one of these MCP servers, it's the only time that I've been able to code an entire website using DeepSeek or using Gemini 2.5 Flash. So what I've started doing is, for example, I'm currently planning a WordPress website using Klein. And you can see, instead of just going straight into the coding, I've actually asked, but in the system instructions, right? Not in the prompt, but in the system instructions, it says use context 7 MCP during the research phase, right? So what I'm actually doing is I'm using MCPs plus custom instructions, right? So when I press act here, and I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video, I'm just showing you what's possible right now. But when I press act here, and there's nothing in this prompt that says use Taskmaster AI, right? But when I press act, what it should do is it should automatically use Taskmaster AI, right? The MCP. So let's press act here. I might have to remind it to use Taskmaster. Let's see. Oh, I didn't even have to tell it, right? So you can see it's initialized the project using Taskmaster AI. You might think this is overkill. This is a client website. I've tried augment code. Wasn't really working that well. I'm now going to try Taskmaster with client using um, my custom MCP stack. Now I'm probably not going to build this entire thing in this video, but I just wanted to show you this whole thing because this and I'm going to show you one more thing as well as part of this flow in just a second. But nothing I'm showing you on this video is particularly difficult, right? All I've got is Context7 MCP, um, Taskmaster AI MCP, right? Which is what this is doing right now. It's creating a PRD.txt. And then watch, it will then pass that PRD.txt, turn it into different tasks, and then create the entire project for me. This will be expensive, but like I said, it's a client website. They're paying for this website, so... Um, Taskmaster AI MCP, and then my own custom QA MCP, which again, sounds complicated, but like I said, all I did was just take the sequential thinking server, git clone it, tell client to read it, and then told it to make me my own QA server. So we'll see that in, a in action in just a second. Right now, what it's doing is it's just doing the pre-steps. And remember, none of this is in the prompt, right? So the only one that's in the, all I say is uh, Context7, right? I don't actually mention any of the other MCPs. And I wouldn't have to mention uh, Context7. It's just this prompt came from when I was using Boomerang Code and Augment Code before, um, where I don't have this um, system prompt set up. So all of it actually comes from the custom instructions right here, right? And I'll tell you exactly how I made these custom instructions. First of all, you need to be able to download and work with MCPs, create your own MCPs. It's not as hard as it seems. Literally all they are is a server that is running um, certain code that you can then send commands or your AI can send commands to that server. 
and then give you the response directly from the third party API. It's really, really simple, right? It's really not that complicated. Every time you make an MCP, ask it to make a readme, right? Read me.md, right? With the name, so context underscore seven, for example, readme, right? And then what you do is you take all those readmes. So you have these three MCP servers set up. So they're inside your actual MCP servers here on installed, right? These are my three that I have on. Then what you do is you get these readmes and you take this to Claude or ChatGPT or whatever. And I just fed all of the readmes, right, to Claude and asked it to give me a system prompt for a workflow that uses Context7 Taskmaster AI and QA MCPs in order to create projects, right? So you can see here now it's um, it's basically running through the Taskmaster process, right? I'm actually still on plan mode, so I'm not sure how it's doing any of this. Why is it on plan mode? Okay, so the final stage of this, for some reason it was on plan mode, I just had to change it, but this should now uh, use the QA, um, the, the, the QA system. Okay, so I just left it for a little bit and now you can see here it's doing Q code QA feedback. It's analyzing the code using Claude Sonic 3.7 and it's seeing whether or not the code is actually performing the task that it needs to. Now, I will say this is still, you know, first look at this. I'm still just beginning to get to grips with all of this stuff, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys what was possible with MCP workflows. And also MCPs, because right now everyone's obsessed with like MCPs, third party connections, blah, blah, blah. But you can also use, you can also use them to completely change how Klein codes, right? So you can see here, it's now changing the code, right? It QA'd it. Now, I haven't made videos about this yet. This isn't live, but I'm just showing you guys, you know, what's possible. So now I'm going to start this whole process again. Um, what, what I like to do is I like to iterate a little bit. And also for some reason it wasn't on um, plan mode. Sorry, it wasn't on act mode, which is really, really annoying. Um, what you can actually do on Klein, which is great, is you can press restore here, restore files and tasks, right? Put it back on plan mode and say start. And now we're back to square one, right? So I can just close all these and start all over again. I'm going to leave the video there, guys. This is my current workflow for kind of more complex projects like this thing that I'm making now, which is proving to be a bit of a bitch to make. So I'm going to try and build it with this stack instead. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. Check out the school and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.